Good evening and welcome to Omni Bros Live. I am one of your co-hosts, Omni Dog from Omni Dog Vault, joined as always on a Thursday night by Comics Guide 101's Lou. Lou, how you doing, buddy? It's good to be here. Damn it, I got it wrong. Good to be here. <laughs> uh, and it's easy to do this. How's it going, Gio? Sup, you two doing wonderful, and to the chat and everybody tuning in, no matter where you are, live or pre-recorded or recorded or whatever, uh, thank you for tuning in to another installment. I'm doing great, and I'm happy to talk about uh, whatever it is that we're going to be talking about in a couple minutes. Good. It sounds like you're prepared. Yes. <laughs> Maximum effort. Max Q. Um. What we're talking about tonight is, I know it's actually pretty personal to Lou, um, Darwin Cook, a fabulous writer, fabulous artist, taken t way too young from us, mm -hmm. and a mm -hmm. personal, very personal favorite of Lou's, um, and uh, a favorite of mine, but I know this one, uh, when he passed, it hit you uh, very hard, Lou, right? Yes, uh, I've told the story a bunch of times, but uh, I was actually at the time uh, with my ex uh, at, at the mall, and I was, you know, she was doing her own thing, and I was just kind of scrolling through my newsfeed, and everybody's posting "Rest in Peace, Darwin Cook," and I was like, "Oh no," because a few days before we had heard that he was really rough, he had cancer, but we didn't really know how bad it was. Um, and uh, unfortunately, he was put in a hospice, and. When I saw the news of that, I, I just sat down at a bench and I teared up. I, almost, I really started bawling because I was like, wow, what a what a talent we lost. It's incredibly sad. Not only that, but just the, the incredible sadness that must be felt in his family and in the industry as a whole. Because just, man. <sighs> but uh, Jess, where can we get Darwin Cook's books, man? If, uh, if we uh, wanted to grab them. Actually, I wanted to see how old he was. Oh, my gosh. He was younger yeah. than I was. Three years younger than I am. Yeah, young guy. Yeah, Ufa, born in 62. So he was three years younger than I was. Gosh, he was young in his 50s. Um, we're going to talk a lot about his books tonight. Mm -hmm. And those books can be found at instocktrades.com, where you can get your collected editions up to 50% off. Loyalty discounts add 2% to that. Every quarter, there's an Omni Bros Live discount code. And if you decide you're going to make an order, and if it's over $50, you get, in the United States, free shipping, which is amazing, because those boxes are heavy. Mm -hmm. Fabulous customer service. Fabulous packaging. That's InStockTrades.com. That's nice. right. Nice, <laughs> but yeah, uh, Darwin Cook, man, just taken from us way too soon, way too damn soon. Way too shame. soon is right. Um, you know, and Tim Klein mentions Batman ego, and I don't, you know, that's crazy. I don't think I have that. I'm a huge Batman fan. I'm a huge Darwin Cook fan, and that's one. Now wait a minute. This is, is it included in this? Uh. This uh, this uh, graphic ink book. Bat is, what is Batman Ego? Is that a big book uh, or a, just a story? I think it's just a story, a small story. Small I story. Mean, Fly, the okay. the trip, good times, lots of motion. I don't. I don't think I have Batman Ego in anything. I'll have to figure that out. There is a trade for it on In Stock Trades, and there is a deluxe hardcover which came out recently, if I remember correctly. Uh, you can get it for like 20 bucks. Okay, I need to get that. Um, we're going to be talking. I've got a bunch of stuff to show that I have. He had a very distinctive style. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> excuse me. Oh, the story I like is in... Selena's Big Score. Selena's Big Score. Catwoman, Batman, Ego. I've only read this book like four times. What the... <laughs> God, what is wrong with me? I've read it like four times and I'm like, I can't even remember. 
What the hell? <laughs> what? Okay, wait a second. Book four score. Uh, I got to say, Jess, I love your uh, caricature voices. Cool. Yeah, nerd, nerd Jess, and now Monster Cookie, Cookie Monster Jess. They're, they're really awesome. my, my favorite is slightly pissed off Nerd Jess from the 1970s. Uh, that's pretty specific. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a book I have. Selena's big score, and it is signed. Oh, it's in there. Nice. Yeah, by Darwin Cook. Now, I did not. I bought this from. A member in the group, um, and I don't. Uh, I did not get this. Did not get a chance to meet him, Darwin Cook, to get it signed myself. But I did get it. I do have his autograph. Um, <laughs> uh, so, okay. So I do have Batman ego. Um, so we can <laughs> talk about. He had a very distinctive style. Yep. Um, that was all his own. It was very, um, I don't know, kind of art deco almost sort of, uh, kind of, um, lent itself well to detective stories and, um, uh, throwback tough guy era stories, kind of a, kind of a dark noir, uh, forties era type style. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. At the, at the same time, it was it was a style that was unique to his own, and it's it's uh it's timeless. Um, it, he he had a way of bringing in the modern with the old school, in terms of his art, and that's that's really what I loved about him. Um, and it, the thing is with Cook is you can immediately tell a Darwin Cook drawing from just about anybody else. It's it, it's very distinguishable the way he drew characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me. I will. Um, I, yeah, it's really, it's really like nobody else's. Let me um, mm -hmm. isolate some of his art. This is from Catwoman Trail of the Catwoman. Yes. Now, uh, Jess, correct me if I'm wrong. I might be mistaken, but wasn't it him? It was Darwin that came up with like the more modern day take where she's wearing kind of like the, uh, the. Um, Kind of like the motorcycle hat on her head and the leather and everything. It, it, it that's kind uh -oh. of what we see now, right? That yeah, with the goggles. Yes, that's what I mean. Yes, yeah. Yes, yes. That was uh, his. I, I I think that was his thing. Yeah, that's that's who like this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's I who that. I've always thought created that look. That that's actually my favorite look for that character. Yeah. Let's see if we can. Get a picture of her like that, but I mean, I, it, it just—it's not cartoony at all, but it's very distinctive. And tough guys look tough. Mm -hmm. There's lots of cigarettes and scotch and stuff, and <laughs> you know, you know when you're doing, you're dealing with a. Here's a picture of Selena. Like we think of her, which right. reminds me, I need to check in on Gotham and see how Selena has turned out five years later. Because I always thought she was an interesting character. I didn't, I didn't l end up really caring for the show after the first year, but hmm. um, I always thought that uh, Selena Kyle was an interesting character. Yeah, Gotham's one of those shows where I've always meant to come back to it, especially since I've heard their rendition of the Joker is actually pretty damn good up until, you know, you know the twin thing and like a bunch of other stuff that mess it up. But yeah, that's the look. Yeah, here's the look. That's one of my favorite interpretations of the character, if not my favorite. I, lo I love the way she looks there. Yeah. Okay, so his... His look is, um, he's, he's always, and he's always got people drinking and smoking and fighting and brawling like they're back in the forties. Right. Um, it, it, but it's set in the modern world. 
if you if you like the aesthetic of something like Mad Men, you will love Cook's work because that's that's what a lot of that stuff looks like. It's very much of that era where, um, mm -hmm. quote unquote, men were men, and you know yeah. there was a lot of smoking, there was a lot of drinking, and you know I'm a sucker for the rockabilly look, especially on women like that, like rockabilly and tattoos. It gets my engine going for some stupid reason. Um, but th th that's that's kind of the style that Cook really draws from. It's that rockabilly time period. Mm. I have I found a, a quote from an interview where uh, he says that he attributed the ability to develop his own style as a byproduct of limited entertainment choices, allowing him to focus on deconstructing the comics that inspired him. That included Detective Comics and Spectacular Spider-Man from uh, John Romita, and et cetera, et cetera. Well, I mean, let's just let's kind of go down uh, his list. Cook got his start actually as an animator. He worked on anybody know? You guys should all know this. Adam he, Ant. Huh? Uh, <laughs> Mighty Mouse. No, no, come on. He worked on the Timverse stuff. Yeah, he worked on the Timverse. He was an mm -hmm. animator in the Batman Timverse stuff. Oh, really? And yeah, yeah. He worked in animation for a long time, dude. He was a uh, he worked on the Tim uh, Bruce Tim stuff, the Batman the Animated Series. He worked on Batman Beyond. Hmm. Yep. So he was in some way, shape, or form as crazy as it is. Darwin Cook has always been kind of a part of my life because I, you know, guys like me and Gio, we grew up on those cartoons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It, so. it definitely it definitely leaves a sour note because he is such a powerful individual with his style that when someone like him passes, you never forget him uh, yeah. because he was so impactful in everybody's lives, whether they knew it or not. He worked in the animation industry, and I do know he was a, a graphic artist and uh, art director and all that stuff that's not related to comics. So you can sort of start to piece together how this man created such a unique style in his drawings. Right. He he got his first start, like I said, in the Timverse in the 90s, but he wanted to transition eventually into comic books and stuff like that. Unfortunately, this was the 90s. And when Cook tried to transition into comics at the time, it didn't really go well for him. Um, in fact, I, I remember he had a really hard time getting started out in that area because it was the 90s and everybody wanted the Lee Fields and the McFarlands, those big, huge, muscle-bound guys who really don't have necks and can't scratch their ass if you made them $10. Um, <laughs> that's that's That was what was in at the time. And it took up until the 2000s for him to break out. In fact, I think Batman Ego if I remember correctly, was his first really breakout book. Okay, wait, apparently I have that. Where is that? <laughs> it's somewhere <laughs> in this book. You got uh, it. Sir. Come on. I know. I don't know where it is in this book, though. I just had a really cool picture of Las Vegas that I think is worth looking at that he drew. It's so neat with the showgirl and stuff. You got it. I believe in you. <laughs> well, there's no table of contents, so... All right, wait a sec. Let me see if I can find it. Um, I, don't, I don't own what I'm about to mention, but Cook did work uh, for Marvel, and he did a couple issues of uh, Tangled Web, where he drew... Yeah. Not he basically drew my two favorite properties in the Marvel universe: one, Spider-Man, and two, the Inhumans, and three, yeah. the Fantastic Four, all in one mini storyline, and it looked amazing. I loved it. I remember seeing that issue. To this day, I've never read it. Um, but Cook was mostly he did he did a few things at Marvel, but he was a DC guy through and through. Mm -hmm. like, that, that's that's really where his bread and butter was. Uh, he had a few extra projects on the side, like you said, Gio. He had X Force, Wolverine, and Dupe. Uh, Spider-Man Tangled Web, which we, you just mentioned. And uh, in 2001, Cook uh, came up. Now I'm starting to go through his bio because I was able to finally find it. He uh, came up with a four-issue serial called Trial of Catwoman. And I believe Jess has that in there somewhere <laughs> as he's digging through that uh, stuff. Yeah, Trial of Catwoman's <laughs> right here. Yeah. And I have to admit, 
let me see it real quick again because I was scrolling through that trial cat woman. Yeah, that's one of the few cook stories that I still have not read. No, this is ego's not in this book. Ego's a separate thing. What what you have is Selena's big score. Yeah, it's just a bunch of Catwoman stuff in this book. Yeah. Okay. Um. So I don't own. I didn't think I owned Ego. If you get the Ego Deluxe hardcover, that comes with Batman Ego, Selena's big score, plus Tales from Gotham Knights twenty three and thirty three, and stories from Solo issues one and five. So that collects everything. Wait a minute. I do have Solo. Is it, is it in Solo? Mm, well, Cook worked on two issues from Solo and some extra stuff, but I don't think Ego is in there. I might be wrong. Well, let me pull it. <clears throat> so, yeah, after after that in 2001 with, the, uh, with mm -hmm. that Catwoman story, he... <clears throat> he went in in 2002 and he went on to draw Selena's big score, which uh, Jess already showed off. Arguably, though, his biggest hit wouldn't come un until 2004, which I'm sure Jess has already pulled up and is my favorite. Um, my favorite. This? That's the one. I'm finding that one. in this house somehow. This is one of my favorite books of all time, by the way. I love this so much. I what love book? New Frontier. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I have in the, uh, the yeah, in 2004, he released what many consider his magnum opus, which is New Frontier. Uh, New Frontier is, it, it's perfect for me. For me, it, it's perfect comics. Uh, it doesn't get really any better than New Frontier for me in terms of art, in terms of storytelling, in terms of character. It, it's perfect. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I have very few books that I can honestly say that about, but... Uh, yeah. It's only, geez, New Frontier is only like five, six issues. It's not even that long. Um, mm -hmm. And then they released a single one-shot issue that came out with the DVD a few years later. But New Frontier, Cook explains it himself, is what is called the right stuff of comics. It's an all-ages story set, let's see, it's been a while since I remember it, around the Vietnam era. Am I correct, Gio? So it's set around the Vietnam era, and it centers around the forming of the Justice League. Um, and it's it's a throwback story in the best way possible because while it does center on the forming of the Justice League, it's also the best Green Lantern Hal Jordan story origin that I have ever read. You know, on the on the back of forming the Justice League is Green Lantern's origin. And it's fantastic. He Cook gets Hal Jordan, and he gets that time period of the 1970s. He's a cocky fighter pilot. That's what Hal Jordan is in this story. And some of the artwork that he uses in here is astounding. I mean, simply put, astounding. Yes. Gio is showing famous. off. Yes. Uh, Gio is showing off one of the famous panels in here, which is the first appearance of Wonder Woman in New Frontier. Now, Something to notice about his rendition of Wonder Woman, which I love, you know, I, I personally love his take on Wonder Woman, is that uh, she is an Amazonian, and Cook draws her as an Amazonian, which means she's big. She's a she's a bigger chick. Uh, she's taller than Superman inside of it. And I remember when this first issue came out, people were complaining like, "How did? Why did he draw? Why did he draw Wonder Woman? It's taller than Superman and just as built." And it's like, well, she's an Amazonian, so it makes sense. Um, he draws her in with curves, and you know, as a man who likes his share of women with curves, I applaud him for that. I've told this story before, but um, I've met Cook at a con, and I asked him, "I loved your interpretation of Wonder Woman." And he told me, he's like, yeah, DC Comics hates it. Me and Jimmy Palmiotti, I think it was, it was Jimmy Palmiotti, we pitched a Wonder Woman solo story to DC Comics and ongoing, and it never got off the ground because they hate the way he draws her. That's a shame. Mm, that is a shame. Which, can you imagine a Wonder Woman solo story being drawn by Cook and being written by Jimmy Palmiotti, Jess? <sighs> <laughs> so awesome. I mean, just look. This is awesome right here. This, let me just show you real quick. 
this mm-hmm. scene right here of Superman and Wonder Woman. Yep. It's dreamy, man. Mm-hmm. And this was, it actually starts in the 40s and goes through the 50s. And even into the 60s, right? At the end? Yeah, at the end, yeah. Oh, my mistake then, yes. No, yeah, you're fine. It's been a while since I've read it. Yeah, Um, looking at it right now makes me want to read it again. And again and again and again. It's his love letter to the transitioning of going from the golden age of comics to the silver age of comics. That's the bigger thing that's going on there. I mean, for crying out loud, look at this. Yeah. Iconic image. <laughs> yeah. That's, That's all you awesome. need to know. Yeah. And I love in this book how Batman says to Martian Manhunter, basically, watch your step. I can take you out with a match. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the few. I, I know I'm not into animation as much as you guys are. But uh, this is one of the few uh, animated things that I really loved was the an- the animation, the animated version of this. Jess, if you're showing um, something off, Gio's the one I, on the screen. I realize <laughs> that I have him highlighted. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> Gio's flipping through pages like, I'm going to start over soon eventually. <laughs> yeah. I'm just showing oh. random pages. Wildcat. Mm-hmm. That yeah, movie, he's got all the greats in this. That movie is great. If you've never seen it, I do recommend it because Cook worked on it himself. Yeah. And it adds a different flavor and taste to an already perfect book that I think, you know, give it a shot. You're probably going to enjoy the movie too. Yeah. I, I, I still haven't seen it, to be honest. Oh, oh really? You, I've you seen an animated it. movie you haven't? I haven't seen it. That's shocking. I've heard it's great. I know he worked on it, and it was a pain in the ass for them to get it to work, to get it to off the ground. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I really liked it. I, I saw that a long time ago. Uh, this deluxe edition comes with this, which was published around the time when the right. movie came out, and it's a uh, one-shot explaining mm-hmm. some stuff about it, the, uh, an extra chapter, I should say. Right, and something to note about the Absolute Edition is that the Absolute Edition, at least the last time I remember, I don't know if they did a reprint of it and it includes it, but the original release of the Absolute Edition does not include the one-shot that is inside of the uh, the DVD, the Blu-ray, uh, because that one-shot came out uh, uh, <clears throat> after the first Absolute Edition was already on the market. And mm-hmm. I, th- But I think they are reprinting the Absolute of with, New Frontier, and I think everything. it has, yeah, I think yeah. it does have the one shot with it. Mm-hmm. There's a Trinity right there. Yeah. Now, DC Comics actually came to Cook and asked him, can you please do more of these? We, we, we're dying for you to do more of this stuff. And in fact, he turned them down, and the way he describes it is because of what he liked to call Rocky Syndrome where the first Rocky is actually an Oscar-winning film. It's an award-winning movie, but then you start getting into the sequels, and it kind of dilutes the brand, because all you think about is kind of the cartoony villains. Um, I love the Rocky sequels, so... But he, <laughs> he makes he No, he makes a, a good point, because when you think about the Rocky sequels, you don't think about Rocky being an Oscar-worthy movie. You think about, you know, Ivan Drago and Clubber Lang and all that stuff. Adrian! <laughs> I love that panel. I'm trying to look for the kiss uh, frame with. Uh, oh, the iconic kiss with yeah. Hal Jordan. Also, there you go. Your boy Aquaman. Yeah, Cook Aquaman. That's awesome. I wish he could have done an Aquaman story. Uh, you get the Suicide Squad. Everybody shows up in this. For Task Force X, I should say. Uh, where's the damn kiss panel? Jesus. All right, here's a cool one with uh, Green Lantern. <laughs> that's my favorite drawing out of this whole book, and I can't find it. What the hell? The one with, the one with Hal Jordan kissing? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's beautiful. And the jet in the background? Yep. Uh, I better I think find it soon, or else we're going to get demonetized if I start cursing. I think it, uh, it's close to the beginning. It's the beginning? I'm pretty sure it's close to the beginning. 
New Frontier is going to DC Black Label? What? That doesn't make any sense. No, New Frontier is an all-ages book. Um, if you have a friend or a family member who they're just kind of starting to get into comics, they can read New Frontier perfectly fine. Uh, but I think if you go into it with a love and knowledge of the time period and the characters and uh, who they are, you will get even more out of it. It's it's pure and simple. It's a love letter to that time period, and uh, I think Jess would know more than anybody about that time period because that's when you first started really getting into comics. Uh, yeah, and the Absolute is getting released uh, around the middle of November of this year. The new uh, reprint. Jess, if you want, switch back to everybody because I can't find it. Okay. <laughs> Poor Gio. Uh, okay. That's fine. We got a lot we can show. Um, oh, found it. Sorry. Ah, Yay, sorry. There, it, there it is. I mean, it's that iconic shot with the Justice League in its entirety, and this that I think are like the big uh, takeaways that everybody uh, remembers this book from. Yeah. Just lovely, lovely art. I love it. Oh, Jesus. So, yeah. Okay. You can switch back. You don't. I, the, uh, it's. And, and not only is it his art, but Dave Stewart's coloring on it. I believe that was yeah. Dave Stewart. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Every single panel is colored meticulously, and it looks incredible. Mm -hmm. Like, that was that was one of those rare times where you get a creator and a colorist, and, a let, and it just the whole team is on point for every single issue that was coming out. And it's very rare you get something like that. And that is it's why it's one of those pretty much 10 out of 10 score books. You can't yeah. find anything wrong with it. It's absolutely perfect. And I think it's also one of the few books that we all universally agree that we all love in yeah. the group chat. I think, I think you're right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it does, it does um, evoke a certain time period for me um, with all the... Um, the t the the style that he draws in and then and, and the time periods and stuff it does make me nostalgic yeah um and i think it's it's crazy because if you're reading new frontier the book the character the main characters in the book such as superman wonder woman and all that stuff um they actually first appear <laughs> in the same order that dc originally published them even down to the correct month and year in the story's timeline Oh no, I didn't know that. That's interesting. Wow. Cool. Yeah, it was. He was that meticulous about it. Hmm. Uh, so in July 2005, it was announced in 2006. Cook and writer Jeff Loeb would produce a Batman and Spirit crossover. Now, I've never read the Batman and Spirit books. What? You didn't know this? There's a bat. <laughs> uh, no. Yeah, There's Batman they're... and Spirit crossovers? Well, D Darwin Cook did a Spirit books for a while, man. Oh, well, I got those. Yeah. yeah. I actually do. Let me go pull them. I, think, uh, I know exactly called... where they are. I think one of them is called Pork and Beans. Uh... I've, I've never read it. Uh, to be followed shortly after the ongoing Spirit series and Darwin Cook, uh, Batman the, uh, slash the Spirit was ultimately published in 2006, Jess. Batman the Spirit is included in the trade paperback Will Eisner's The Spirit, Volume 1. So when he gets back, he could probably pull that out somewhere. Yeah. <clears throat> so it was really at this time where Cook was firing on all cylinders. He was just coming off of New Frontier. DC Comics wanted to really get him out there and to really put out a lot of stuff. Um, but Cook was really apparently very choosy with his projects because it's not like a guy that you stuck him on an ongoing monthly series every month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is cool. It's got a cutout. Ooh. Oh, that's awesome. Cool. Yeah, I didn't know that. That is cool. Now, I knew he did the spirit, but I thought you said there was a crossover between the spirit and Batman. There mm -hmm. is. There, so there is. Yeah, yeah, there is. Okay, now that I did not know. Is that volume one, the book that you're holding? This is volume one, yeah, book one. It should be in there. <laughs> it should be in there if you want to take a look. At <laughs> With it. Bat <laughs> Batman the Spirit. Have yeah, you ever read that volume, Have you ever yeah, read it? Yeah, I, re I read it when I got it. 
<laughs> Let me get all to the, it. All the stuff behind Jess is just a green screen. Not a video <laughs> room. Oh my god. That would be amazing if it were true. I know it's not, but still. Can you imagine? It's a, you take the, the, the chroma key out and it's just a blank office like the uh here's uh, pork and Knight. beans. Like the Dark Knight Bad Cave. It's all empty. <laughs> Uh, where is, okay, I'll find it. Here it is. <clears throat> nice. In fact, I think the spirit, his last image book are the only things that I haven't read by Cook yet. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Harley's in this. I forgot. It's been a while since you've not read it, huh? No, yeah. yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, you can clearly see all his influences from watching uh, the Adam West show. Because he was a big well, fan of that. Right, right. He was, because he grew up around that time period. Like a lot mm -hmm. of kids. Like yeah, I did, yeah. yeah. So that was what he loved. And I, I, I have a loving fond, like a lot of people, they look at that stuff and they think, oh, it's kind of campy. It's kind of lame. And, you know, it does have its fair share of camp and cheese, but I grew up, grew up watching that stuff in Puerto Rico. And I have a love and fond, fondness for that, for that TV show. And I'm pretty sure Gio is probably in the same boat as me where he grew up watching episodes in Puerto Rico. Uh, you're going to, you're going to wow. be shocked. but. I I didn't grow up watching it. I'm sorry. What? I'm really shocked at that, man. They used to yeah. air the reruns all the time. Mm -hmm. No, no, I know, I know. It's just that I, I I never like super got into it. I didn't really care at the time. Yeah. Later on, I watched it and and I loved it, but you know, I didn't grow up with it. Mm -hmm. Uh, Chase, Chu, we're going to get to Parker. We're kind of going in order of the man's work. Oh, man. as that, 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 yeah, that, Parker right here. That yeah, crossover right. looks amazing. I want to read that. The Batman and Spirit? Yeah, that looks awesome. It's Killer super Croc, memorable. Wow. And that Ivy, the way he drew that Ivy character, that's awesome. Nice. Oh, the bat shark repellent, Dave K. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. No, Yeah, I'm definitely checking this out tonight. I'm going to have to go on Comixology and check something out. Because I haven't read that, that Spirit of Batman crossover. Is that any good, Jess? It was when I read it three years ago. <laughs> That was at Jess's height of his buying prowess. It actually was. <laughs> it, it totally was. That's when I was going the craziest. 2016. 2016, the 16 Jess was the best. <laughs> <laughs> he was the most fun. I missed 2016 yeah. Jess. He was overweight. He was drinking root beer. <laughs> he was buying was comics like crazy every week. He was fun, man. All those statues. Like. Statues, pops, <laughs> action figures. Oh, man. Then he started losing weight. He stopped by. I, I hardly recognize you anymore, Jess. Good heavens. <laughs> no, seriously. Go back and look at some of those earlier episodes, and you look at some of the halls <laughs> Jess would pull out. And we would just all be sitting there for a good 20, 30 minutes. It's just oh. kept pulling out books. <laughs> 20, it 30 was, minutes? Come yes, on. It was bad. It was bad. Some of those earlier episodes we were pulling out, we were just sitting there going, how many more you got left? <laughs> it was awesome. I liked it. <laughs> it, was, it was bad in the best way possible. Um, yeah, 2016 Jess was a nut. <laughs> Yeah. Um, okay, so following the success of uh, his, his <clears throat> Spirit series, 
he went on to work on the New Frontier animated movie. Uh, and that was noticeably a, a very difficult project for him to work on. And I still haven't seen it. You guys have already mentioned it. So we don't, really don't even need to talk about that. But the next really big noteworthy thing would be him adapting the Parker series. Um, and at the time, there have been several films depicting the Parker character. Uh, Mel Gibson did Payback. And there were a few other a few films that came out before that. Uh, but he really wanted to adapt the characters from the books. Um, and I believe it was Darwin's, uh, what was it? Richard Starks. Richard Starks' Parker series. And there have been several adaptations, but nothing ever really got the core of the character. And if you read those books and if you read the, the uh, basically a bridge version of those stories, which is what Cook would do, they are fantastic. Like the, the Martini edition of... Darwin Cook's Parker series is beautiful. It's one of the, it's it might as well be called an absolute because that's pretty much what it is, and it's one of the best absolute slash deluxe hardcovers that uh, have that I've ever seen. Yeah, it's a beauty. It's got the hunter, the man with the getaway face, the outfit, and a short adaptation from the seventh, and. It is cool because it's got, it's sort of black and white, but the color palette changes. Oh my gosh. Just look at this and think of how long it took to pen and ink this. Mm -hmm. This shot of New York City. Wow. Look at that. That must have taken days. That mm -hmm. straight up looks like a photograph. Yeah. But, and then you, and it, this is all light green. I I guess, well, uh, maybe gray, grayish green. And then you move on to the next story. And it's changed color palettes. It's blue. Yeah. He had a different color palette for every story. Yeah. And this, I mean, now this is big time martini, scotch and cigarettes, hmm. uh, broads and dames and tough guys type of uh, writing and drawing. Right. And of the Parker books, <clears throat> he actually, he was able to do four of them. He did The Hunter, which is the first one. Uh, volume two, which is the outfit of uh, volume three, which is the e score, which I think is, it's not the worst of them by far. They're all magnificent books, but I think it's the least, the weakest one of them. Um, and it's not as bad. It's just, it's not as good as the other ones and Slayground. My personal favorite being volume two, the outfit, because you really get to see cook flex his artistic muscles in there where there are panels of just smaller animations and, it, it's the way that they lay out the plans is one of my favorite pages because he changes his art style completely for those moments. I and mean, is that, that's the outfit, right? That's yeah. the second. Book. This should be the outfit. It's the third story in, in the um, second. Oh, it, it's is the it? third story in the martini edition. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. So he went on to do after the outfit, like I already said, the score and the playground with the idea that there would be more books that would come after that. Unfortunately, we never got those books and we're going to get into that a little bit later. <clears throat> but uh, it's a damn shame. He, I had, I had actually gotten the, uh, the martini edition signed and oh. he did a free sketch inside of it. Oh, um, Yeah. Uh, I actually ended up, unfortunately, selling that because I needed the spare cash at the time to, uh, well, I was saving up for a ring for the X. So stupid me. We saw how that turned out. Um, <laughs> but uh, that's one of the few regrets. He's gone now. So I definitely i will never be able to get that again, which is a damn shame because I would love to have that martini edition with his signature in it. Um
So, but the the plan was always to release a second Martini edition. I asked him that at a con. It just it never got off the ground with his unfortunate passing. He was going to do a few more books. Oh, and he passed away before he could do it. Before he could do any more, he got through the last one he did was Slayground, which was in 2013. He unfortunately never he had plans to keep going, but unfortunately he never got the chance to do it because of his untimely passing. That's brutal. Yeah. So after that, he kind of bounced around. He didn't really have anything too consistent for a while. He did a few issues of Jonah Hex, um, if I'm not mistaken. And you have those, right, Jess? Yeah. Um, now, I found this one. Let's see. As far as I could. Ah, here's another one. All-Star Western has his name on it. Uh, I have these two books. <clears throat> Which is see. a great run. The uh, Jimmy Palmiotti All-Star Western stuff is really good. Oh, yeah. Let me find his singular style in here somewhere. By all means, if you've never gotten a chance to uh, read that stuff, I, I really suggest you track it down. Uh, you really don't need to know anything about Jonah Hex or any of the other stuff in there. You could just jump right into the Palmiotti stuff and you'll be fine. Yeah. This is Jonah Hex, Bullets Don't Lie. And this is... Now, let's see. This is written by Justin Gray and Jimmy Palmiotti, and so this is drawn by Darwin. That was the new 52 stuff. Yeah, Jonah. Uh, no, All-Star Western was the new 52 stuff. Oh, right, right, right. This right, was right. pre-new 52. Right. Which was called uh, DC Comics or something. <laughs> uh, ET, I'll ask, what issue does Cook draw Hex? What issues? Okay, let me see what this is called. It's called The Hunting Trip, art by Darwin Cook. The Hunting Trip. Um, I'm not given a issue number, but it's called The Hunting Trip. Wait. Um, they don't give me an issue number. But it is called The Hunting Trip. And it's in Bullets Don't Lie. Hmm. And in All-Star Western. Okay, Darwin Cook has a, uh, drew a story in here. Let's see where it is. I guess if I was a real professional, I'd have done this before the episode and not while <laughs> we were on the air. But Don't worry about it. Gives it a unique flavor. ETL, <laughs> ETL says it looks like it's issue 33. Oh, you want an issue number? That's what he was looking for, yeah. Oh, you want an issue number? Okay. I'll do that for you on the air. <laughs> nice. Hang on. First, you guys talk because my wife is calling me. Uh oh. It must be okay. important. All right. <clears throat> All right, so he did a few issues of those, and then arguably the biggest project that he would go on to do after that would be the uh, just totally did not focus on us. He totally left. <laughs> um, would be his work on the uh, prequel to Watchmen series, the before Watchmen stuff. See, I have that book, and I was going to show it, but unfortunately we're looking at statues. Yes, or Jess's green screen, as he likes to call green, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it's he, green he, screen. He is our Mysterio. <laughs> he is our Mysterio. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, reference for you kids out there that watch uh, movies. There you go. Um, so I guess while Jess kind of just takes a moment to, this is kind of an intermission, kids. While Jess uh, steps away, what do yeah, you think? Of, real quick of 
what did you think real quick of Spider-Man Homecoming? Because we haven't gotten a chance to review it. Uh, far From Home. Far From Home. That's Yeah, that's correct. Damn it. He's here. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't say it now. <laughs> oh, Twilight Children. I get it. Oh, <laughs> my wife locked herself out of the house. What? She, uh, we had to leave dinner at different times because uh, uh, I had the show. So I oh. came home early and we had friends drop her off and she didn't have her keys with her. Ah, gotcha. Uh, okay, wait. I had just discovered the cook. Uh, uh, Jess, I'm going to say something. It's spoiler free. Don't worry about it. It's about the Spider Man movie. That, is that okay? Yeah. Sure. While you, were away, <laughs> while you were away, I asked you what you thought about the movie. Oh, you want me to take my headphones off? No, 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 no don't worry. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to spoil anything. I'm just going to give my honest feedback. I, It is a better film than Homecoming, but yet I loved Homecoming just a, a, light, a little bit more than Far From Home, uh, mainly because of the uh, writing with the uh, teachers and the comedy between the kids and all that stuff. I didn't like it as much as other people did. But other than that, it is a fantastic, fabulous Spider-Man film that made a billion dollars already, and it's e arguably one of the best Spider-Man movies of all time. Wow. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. It's my second favorite behind Spider-Verse. I just like Vulture a little bit more than Mysterio. That's just me. Oh, as a villain? Yeah. I liked him yeah. more as a villain. Uh, his motivation was a lot better, I think, too. Here is... Um, this is an all-star Western... This is Darwin Cook's. Ooh, nice. I know. Booby book. <laughs> I love his interpretation of Jonah Hex. Fun fact about Hex, that line, uh, I cut myself shaving, that was actually Joe Lansdale. Hmm. Yeah, that was Joe Lansdale that first did that. I really need to collect Jonah Hex stuff. I don't have anything. I've read I've read wow. material from Jonah Hex, but I don't own any books from his uh, from the character. Oh man, you got to get the Lansdale stuff. That's all good. Yeah, that's great stuff. Ah, beautiful. Do you want to know what issue this is? <laughs> this is from All Star Western. They say All Star Western issue twenty. No, let's see. This looks to be. Was Dave Stewart colorist on that as well? Uh, probably. Uh, this is called End of the Trail, and it's weird. They don't give uh, – they may not give credits until – it might be one of those where they give credit at the end. I really do think they just stopped giving Dave Stewart the Eisner because he's already won so many as far as coloring. <laughs> so they just don't bother with it anymore. <laughs> because he did a lot of the uh, BPO. You are correct, BPO. sir. It's Stewart, right? Yeah. Dave Stewart. Yep. Yeah, he did a lot of BPRD stuff. That looks awesome. Let's see, 29 through 34. So I would say that is issue 33 of All Star Western. It's 34. Was the last issue of New 52. ETL's doing your homework. He's bragging about it in the chat. <laughs> that issue 34 was the last issue of New 52. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So it's issue 33 uh, because 34 is the last issue here. Mm -hmm. mm. Wow. Right. Okay, so there we go. So uh, Those books are out of print, right? I think uh, so. Lightly. I, are, uh, are they... Badly out of print. Let me the check. New 52 stuff? Uh, I'm looking on Amazon. The new Fifty Two stuff. They've got like one issue for each thing, each one. And I guarantee you, by the time this episode is done, those will be gone. <laughs> I, I guarantee it. Somebody's gonna snatch them up by the time we're done. Those are good comics, guys. Those are real. Like New Fifty Two had its 
had its ups and downs. Most of them were pretty down, but the All-Star, All-Star Western was awesome. Yeah, by Jimmy Palmiotti. That was good stuff. And nobody the thing is nobody was reading it. I was. Well, yeah, Jeff, I ain't nobody. You know, we read some weird stuff sometimes. And Jonah Hex was awesome too. Yeah, we do. How many how many books uh, were released for that run? Which one? Do you know? For Jonah uh, Hex? New 50, yeah, New 52. Oh, All Star Western? Mm hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six. six volumes. Damn it. Six volumes, okay. and they're, they're all on Amazon right now. They're available. And I'm, I don't know if they're on IST. You could take a look. But oh, each no way. one of the, literally each one of the listings on Amazon, there's only one left, except for volume five, which is $30. And there's two left on wow. there. Yeah, they're not on IST. Yeah, I think they're, volume, they're, they're out. Uh, volume three, there's 13 left, so they're going fast, and I really doubt we'll ever get an omnibus of that stuff, unfortunately. Thank you, ETL, for your help. You're 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 a great guy, and I'm not being insincere when I say that. I mean it. I have to be it's nice to him because his <laughs> wife is my partner's on Saturdays. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that is his wife. <laughs> I forget about that. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Is there, is there a Jonah Omni? No, no Jonah Omni, as far as we know, and I doubt we'll get one anytime soon. Oh, uh, but I think one got solicited, didn't it? Did it? Exactly. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. What's it called again? The um, Bronze Age. Bronze Age. Uh, hex stuff. And if that sells, uh, they're giving them incentive to do continue doing hex stuff, and eventually Palmiotti's run would get an omnibus by volume three, I think, or volume four. Yeah, I think that's the Lansdale stuff, right? Uh, I think the Lansdale, or is that the, would that be the second volume? I think the Lansdale stuff. We all we talked about this in the chat. I yeah, think we did. Fall, I think it would either fall into volume two or volume three. Yeah. Most likely volume two. Yeah, that Bronze Age stuff's good. That's the stuff I, that got me interested in Jonah Hex. Yeah, so buy buy the Bronze Age Omnibus when it comes out. It'll help us out. Mm-hmm. And it's good stuff. It gets the Omni Dog seal of approval. <laughs> that stuff I remember reading. What was the quote from last week? I bought it, so it must be good. I bought it, so it's good. I bought it, so it's good. I, I, was, or was it I ordered it, so it's good? That's what it was. I want. Yeah, that I ordered it, so it's good. <laughs> uh, let's see. Where are we ne- next with? Um... Uh, next up, his next big thing was uh, I mentioned it. it. It was the thing that people thought should never be touched. It's undoable. You cannot come close to compare. Uh, it's before Watchmen. Um. Now, before Watchmen was a series of books back in, geez, 2013, 2014, where they got a whole bunch of writers to do basically mini series set in the Watchmen universe, and they were all prequels. Most of them were duds. They weren't really that good. Um, the Azarello Rorschach one I heard wasn't that good. Um, there was an Ozymandias one that had Jay Lee art, I believe, where the covers were done by Jay Lee, and I don't think... I don't remember that being too good either. Arguably the best stuff, though, was the the two Watchmen books that uh, Cook worked on, mm-hmm. which were The Minutemen and The Silk Spectre. Uh, the Minutemen focusing on the early days of the uh, pre-Watchmen characters, which were The Minutemen, and what ended up happening that kind of ended up breaking them and centering around different characters. And Silk Spectre centered around Silk Spectre during her time uh, in Hollywood and in California during the 19... What was that, Jess? 70s? 60s? It's probably 50s. Uh, I feel like it was the 50s. Right. And out of all the stuff that came out during that time period as far as... Um, <clears throat> as far as like the Minutemen and the Before Watchmen stuff, Cook had the best stuff. Uh, I out of all of them and geo just froze geo are you are you very still or did you freeze he froze oh dear okay uh 
Let me go get the book. Uh, I think we lost him. Okay, let me go get Minutemen. Right. So out of all the stuff, the, the Minutemen and the Silk Spectre stuff was arguably the best stuff that came out. Uh, he did the art for the Minutemen as well as writing duty, and it was him and Amanda Connor, if I remember correctly, Jess will be able to correct me in a second, that did the art for... Um, Amanda Connor did the art for Silk Spectre, Silk Spectre and she assisted him in writing duties. Um, I love both of those books. I think the Minutemen is a fantastic story and it fits in perfectly well with the stuff that, uh, that Alan Moore did in Watchmen and it serves as a nice kind of leading into the events that happened in the Watchmen. So it's a great set of stories involving a very flawed and tragic character. Okay. Yeah. Where were we? Uh, we were talking about the Minutemen and the uh, the Silk Spectre series. Now, who was it that did the art? Was that Amanda Connor? Uh, I think so, yeah. Darwin Cook, Amanda Connor, writers. Darwin Cook, Amanda Connor, artists. Yeah. So let's see. Minutemen, writer, artist, Darwin Cook, colorist, photo. photo. <laughs> Phil Notto. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Silk Spectre, Darwin Cook, and Amanda Connor. Artist was Amanda Connor for Silk Spectre. Silk Spectre. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I liked this book. I did too. Like a lot. Yeah, I did too. I know a lot of fans. They kind of they were down on it, uh, simply because it has the prestige of being the Watchmen. You know. Yeah. Um, but overall, I really dug it. I, I liked it a lot, and I thought the stuff that Cook was doing on there was really good and it fit in right with the Watchmen continuity. You know, it was, it was to me the best stuff that was coming out of that so-so event. Yeah, this is the Minutemen right here. Oh, his interpretation of the comedian is one of my favorites. I know. He draws a mean comedian. He, you know, he looks like the comedian would look. Right, exactly. Like, really does. With that cigar, he looks like Clark Gable. He does look like Clark Gable. There's probably two or three people in the chat going, who the fuck is Clark Gable, right? Oh, my gosh. I, that really <laughs> dates me. Oh, my goodness. You're right. <laughs> Clark Gable. We're going to get to a point where people don't remember Brad Pitt pretty soon. You shut your whore mouth. He's a beautiful <laughs> man. He is a beautiful man, and I will not take that. <clears throat> Brad Pitt's face was chiseled by the gods themselves. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, and you can see right there, Cook uh, imitating that famous Watchmen six panel lay uh, nine panel layout, which is it's great if you can do it right, but it's a pain in the ass to draw. <laughs> Justin Page, my wife and I still watch Rifleman at supper time. Huh. I love that show. <laughs> Chuck Connors. <clears throat> well, I think we really is Geo back? Is he trying to get back in or are we permanently lose him? No, we've lost him for right now. Uh poor guy. His internet probably just went out. Okay. So this is uh this book. Before Watchmen. Before Watchmen. So yes, uh after that. Uh, he had a few pop-ups here and there where he would show up in a few one-shot issues and things like that. But his next pro project, and unfortunately, ultimately, would be his last, was uh, Invisible Children. Now, Twilight Children? Twilight Children. Twilight Children. Bear with me. It's been a few years. Uh, Twilight Children, which is a weird book. I didn't know how I felt about it once I read it. I kind of had mixed feelings about it. Now, Cook didn't write it, but he did the art duties on it, and that was really what drew me to the project. Uh, I wasn't in love with it. I didn't 
really like it that much. Yeah, I was and, in the same boat as you. And I'm kind of tired of getting up and down looking for books, so I don't feel like getting up and getting it. <laughs> if I really loved it, I'd get up and get it, but I didn't really <laughs> love it. So that's a no from both of us on that yeah. one. You guys, you guys can kind of skip out on it unless you're a cook completionist, but he didn't write it. He just did the art duties on it. So, you know. And then he had a few things coming up. He had a few projects that were lined up with Image and uh, a few other things in the works, uh, including another Parker book. Unfortunately, in 2016, he would succumb to his battle with cancer, which was a very private battle. Almost, uh, it wasn't known in the industry that he had it. It was literally, geez, it was probably like within the span of four days, the news got out that he had cancer and that he was in hospice. And then we found out he died. Yeah. No. Didn't even know it. Up, oh, yeah. She was back. There Sorry. Sorry. All right. I uh, Wi-Fi went. I thought you were just posing really well. <laughs> uh, and then I started hitting uh, refresh, and and then I noticed, oh, the whole internet is out. So yay! So I had to <laughs> wait a bit. So Darwin Cook is missed badly. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Very badly, unfortunately. So that's that's uh, for the most part. I mean, unless we really missed anything, I think we covered the man's uh, legacy in his books. Um, damn shame, you know. Real fucking shame because he he died. How old was he, Jess? He was only a few years younger than you. Well, let's see. Uh, three years ago, he's three years younger. Okay, wait. Let me do the math. Let's see. <laughs> Fifty-three, so it's fifty-seven. But he was three years younger, so I think he was fifty-four. Yeah, so not even really in his mid-fifties, and yeah, fifty-three. He was fifty-three. 53. Jeez, man. Uh, <laughs> Highlighter is bra blaming Darkhawk for your uh, internet freezing. Yeah, <laughs> I swear. I mean, I, I didn't even do anything to Dark Hog. I was just laughing, but I guess that's that's more than enough. I cleaned him Kirk's. up, and he is now posed pro prominently directly in front of War of Kings. Now that I finished the uh, review of it, he is he's right there. I I haven't messed with him since. I, the thumbnail I did included Dark Hog in, in with the book. Good, so I'm like good. paying homage to him now. Good vibes. I'm not messing with him. <laughs> Darkhawk never forgets, Jess. That's the problem. I, know. Right now. Um, yes. I, I can't find uh, I can't find hold on. I can't find the image because I don't have the book, but I can show you on my phone. Let's see if it works because I think this is pretty noteworthy. Uh, this is Use uh, by Darwin Cook. Just a sec. Let me highlight you. Oh, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, sort of. There you go. So it looks great, too. Now, did he do... Am I forgetting... Did he do the Rocketeer? No, I don't uh, think he got to do no, the Rocketeer. I never... I was about, oh, no, no, no. I was thinking about somebody else. I was thinking about somebody else. I was thinking about the artist that did... Uh, Daredevil with Mark Wade, Chris Samney. Uh, this doesn't work. Whatever. It's Medusa and uh, Sue Storm and uh, uh, Crystal, but you can't see it. Whatever. <laughs> but yeah, his Marvel stuff is great too. We got a dollar ninety nine from Justin Page to answer Ooh. this question. What? Wait, wait, wait. Yep. Pull it up. Put yep. it up. Mm -hmm. Whoops. Um, let me figure out how to do it with without gacking up. Geo. There we go. What do you think of the X-Men box set? I can already tell you only one of us cares about it. And <laughs> that person is talking right now. These other two guys could not care less about it, I bet. Nope. I, nope. I think it's expensive. In my honest opinion, it's pretty expensive for a box set. <laughs> Guys, guys, what did we learn from last week's show? You shouldn't ask us X Men stuff. We don't have Riley or, or Omar on, so don't Boy. ask X Men stuff. And yeah, we not... got jammed up for it too. <laughs> we did. Somebody commented saying you guys should never talk about X Men unless Riley and Omar are on the show. Uh, the I reason. Mean... Go ahead. Yeah. 
No, go no, I was ahead. just gonna say. I was just gonna say that. Um, I think box sets are expensive. However, if you have that kind of money and you want a nice collection of uh, older material, of uh, I think it's chronological. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, yeah, go ahead and get it. But I am not a huge X Men fan, so I cannot go in depth about it. But I can tell you that at five hundred bucks, uh, eh, you better get. You better love it. Wait, wait, wait. How much is that? I think it's five hundred bucks. It's Holy it's shit. what those uh, it's what those Marvel box sets go for. Mm -hmm. Five hundred bones. Wow. Well, I'm not spending five hundred bones on it. I can promise you that. I'll um, I'll What's spend I'll spend can, much less than that on it. You can get the stories in trade paperbacks. You can buy a nice X Men statue. You can. Uh, there's a lot of things that you can do with five hundred bucks instead of getting that box set. I'll just say that much. Go out and take your wife out to dinner for once or something like that. You guys, guys are X-Men shaming me. <laughs> I'm feeling attacked here. Uh, I'm genuinely feeling attacked here. I, I can't believe it. I don't follow the X-Men, but I still say that Scarlet Witch and Magic are two of my favorite Marvel characters. So I kind of do like that side of the X-Men uh, franchise. Yeah. yeah. I love those two myself. Uh, here are the reasons I will be getting it. And um, first of all, it'll, that box set will be half off at IST, but sometimes Amazon has crazy deals. <laughs> Joe Chip says, Jess will buy that box set next time he takes painkillers. Um, I will be buying it even without painkillers. Um, sometimes Amazon will have it for even cheaper than that. Uh, it's the only way you can get the Silver Age X-Men stories now because uh, the epics are out of print and expensive. The omnibus is out of print and expensive. Any, any Silver Age original, 1 through 50 of the Silver Age books um, are out of print and expensive. So... Um, that's the only way you can get them. Plus, it also has a ton of really cool extras um, appearances, like uh, the first Wolverine appearance and things like that. Um, it's got a bunch of X-Men first appearances. So it's got a lot of stuff that's not collected. Hmm. Um, th uh, uh, so things of that nature. Now, it does double dip a lot with stuff I already have in omnibus form. So that is a consideration. I would bet that 40% of that box set I already own in omnibus form, but 60% is enough to get me to want to buy it. Um, and I'm, it's possible I'll be due for surgery that time next year anyway, because <laughs> I seem to be getting a surgery a year right now. So <laughs> you might be That's right, Joe Chip. Oh, man. He's already justifying buying it. I mean, I totally forgot that our wonderful sponsor carries it, and it's probably going to be half off. So yeah. if you can get it at half off, then, yeah, that's a good investment. Uh, I thought I was thinking more of uh, people going to their local shops and stuff. And, and, and buy, Oh, my God. It. I would never pay that or, kind of money for that. Yeah. <laughs> but at 50% off. And if you can get uh, the loyalty thing going and make it 52%, that'd be great. So, yeah, definitely go for it. But at 500 uh, I think about it. Yeah, guys, $500. Think of all the stuff you could do. That's that's a steep pull. Yeah. Even I, even half off. It's a, I mean, it's a good deal half off, but still, that's a lot. I, I will not be uh, – I need Omar right now. He <laughs> – he would be laying into you because he, he did a whole video on it and just was totally rationalizing his buying of it. I could probably be talked out of it and we'll see uh, um, how I feel about it. It'll be two, 250 to 200. Maybe Amazon will have some kind of weird glitchy sale for 200. Um, so we'll see. I, I don't, ha I don't know. <laughs> I, I haven't, if, if I really want it. If you love those stories, you don't you don't care about the price, and you're a fan, and you really really want it, mm -hmm. you're gonna get it. So 
Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I kind of compare that. Um, I compare that to like getting an absolute. Uh, people can get the smaller trade, which is cheaper. But if you really love that story, then go ahead and buy the deluxe edition because it's something that you love. So yeah, get yeah. it. Yeah, I think that um, I I as of right now, I really want it. But come the time that it comes out for sale, maybe my mind will have changed. True. I don't want it as badly as I want the Authority Omnibus. Now I want that really bad. That's my number one book for the year that I want. Oh yeah, the Authority uh, that Omnibus. Comes out. Isn't that that's coming like out next week? week? I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You better get ready because it's coming out next week. I'm looking at it right now. What's the, What's the retail on that, Justin? Why don't you tell them about our sponsor real quick? I believe retail is probably going to be $100 on that. And there's a solid chance, can't promise it, that it'll be half off on InStockTrades.com. I do not know that for a fact. It may or may not be. It is possible because you can get your collected editions for up to 50% off at InStockTrades.com. Loyalty discounts add 2% to that. Every quarter, there's a Omnibros Live discount code. When you make your order, if it's $50 or more in the United States, you get free shipping. How great is that? Fabulous customer service. Fabulous packaging. That's InStockTrades.com. <laughs> nice. Uh, yes, that omnibus will be $99.99, so 100 bucks. Um. That was not a politician's answer. That was a person that doesn't work at the company's answer. I can't tell you how they're going to price it. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking at the. No, no, no. Highlighter said that was a politician's oh, okay. answer. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Highlighter said that was a politician's answer, and I'm that just was like, a politician's answer. You answered it without answering it. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying it might be 50% off. I don't know. They price their own things. I don't work for them. Well, oh my gosh. if you guys in the chat want to find out, you're going to have to tune in Monday night. Monday night, we will tell you. Mm -hmm. Ooh. That is correct. But yeah, it is, coming out, it is coming out next week, and the retail price is $100. I'm looking at the solicitation right now on previews. So, yeah. Even even at forty, I have the I will have the loyalty discount, so it'll be forty four percent off. That's what? still a mighty good savings. Mm -hmm. That's that's worth it. That's that worth is, it. and I cannot wait for that yeah. book. I'm going to read reread both Stormwatch books, Aliens versus Wildcats, or whatever it was, comic <laughs> book, and then go right into the Authority. Nice. Um, now. Were we supposed to say something about Fangirls Assemble, their show yes, tomorrow? Sir. Okay. Yep. Go for saving it. it to the last minute. Uh, the Fangirls are celebrating their 50th episode. And we encourage all of you guys to tune in. It's not going to be Sunday. It's going to be tomorrow at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. So come back tomorrow for the 50th episode of Fangirls Assemble. We're really proud of them. Uh, for uh, this epic achievement and you can tune in and celebrate and like the video and support the girls doing their own thing. It's going to be great. So tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Oh yeah, Justin Page, uh, did somebody recommend Bouncer Humanoids? That's a great Western. Bouncer from Humanoids. You, you recommended that book to me. Yeah. Or, or Omar. Uh, that would be me. Okay, sorry. Ha! Sorry, sorry, sorry. He's already <laughs> stolen enough from me. I mean, I suggested, hey, Omar, why don't you do a, a, a humanoids episode? He, yes, and I'm still waiting for that. Yeah, he and I need to do that. So, yeah. I'd like to, what I'd like to do is read about three or four more humanoids books so I have even more under my belt um, to do a really good video. Um, but yeah, Bouncer is a great Western from Humanoids. I'd like to reread that. People are jumping only... on the All Star. <laughs> People are jumping uh... on the. Oh, sorry. Go, no, ahead. No, go ahead. Sorry. 
And I was saying people seem to be jumping on the All Star Western train right now. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm doing that too. I'm looking online for the trades. Beat them, Geo. Beat them out before they buy them up. Uh, all right. Everybody, just don't search for them. Let me search first. <laughs> you can search later. <laughs> hey, those TMNT books are going out of print now. Oh, boy. We started I mean, a run on them. I would like to think that they will keep uh, keep them in print, but uh, yeah. don't freak out. But at the same time, if you're going to get them, get them now before everything just goes um, out of stock, out of print, just in case. Yeah. Geo for governor. There is an opening right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. None uh, of that but yeah, the, yeah, uh, yeah. the All-Star Western stuff is good. The TMNT stuff that's going out of print, I think we have we had a little hand in that, Jess, because you ordered, you got yours in, right, Jess? So that's all that matters? <laughs> I ordered it, so it's good. All right, that's all that matters. Are you still missing one volume? Uh, no, I got them all. I got just them all? managed to get them all. And then Gabe, I think, said today or today, yeah, he said a lot of them are going out of stock or out of print. But I think IDW is pretty good at reprinting those. Uh, so I would, right. I, yeah. Yeah, so right I wouldn't now, panic. Uh, right now at uh, IST, you can get volume seven, volume eight. Volume five, uh, volume three, and uh, I think that's it. The uh -oh. rest are out of stock at IST. Mm. Uh oh, everybody panic. <laughs> yeah. I think you just have to be patient. My understanding is IDW is pretty good at keeping them in print. No, don't pa don't be patient. Panic. Start buying. Okay. Well, you have two different opinions now. They'll never be back in print again. This is your last chance to get them in your life. Also, volume. Uh, the next volume comes out in two weeks. Oh, so, goody. Oh, yeah. Good God. Okay. So, for reference, the first volume of mm -hmm. uh, of the IDW collection is selling on eBay for thirty seven dollars. What? Is that bad? That's, that's about right, I think. Is that about right? I thought they were more cheaper than that. Those are fifty dollar books. They're $50 are they? Dollar books, yeah. 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 Oh damn. Uh, Joe Chip, I sang the IST jingle twice tonight. I'm happy uh, to sing it again if you like. I mean, <laughs> you know all the relevant details. They're awesome. They're fifty percent off. Up to fifty percent mm -hmm. off. I don't want to say they're always fifty percent off. There's a volume four for two hundred dollars being sold on eBay right now. Yeah, that's the that's the one that's the hardest to find right now. With my favorite turtle, by the way. Yeah, apparently I have to pick a favorite turtle here. <laughs> oh, yeah, I watched your video. Did you pick a, a favorite turtle? Well, as of right now, it's Raphael because that's yes. Uh, nice. yes. I um. Uh, he got the most exposure in that book and I got to know him best. So I just picked Raphael. It, it may change. I don't know. I didn't know it was that big of a deal, but apparently I, you I, have to have a favorite. I think when you go into the series, whenever you see Donnie, I think you'll remember me. Donatello. Yeah. I think uh, we share a lot in common. Donnie Donatello. and I. Okay. The optimism. The optimism. Yeah, uh, and he's he's a, he's he's the sweet guy, and he's yeah. um he's a nice guy out of the four, and he's techy and, and nerdy out of everybody. So, yeah, you know. is he the one that's always into the, the computer? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, yeah, he's got that wow. epic bow staff. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, just before we get out of here, uh, real quick, what do you think of Hickman? Oh, I liked it a lot, especially. Magneto's last thing he said, the last page. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I, uh, Gio hasn't read it and he's going to hold out on it. He's one of the few that's holding out in the group, apparently, because everybody's talking about that book in the group. Uh, even people that don't collect single issues went out and bought a copy. Is yeah. what a lot of people are saying, including yourself, Jess. Um, yeah. 
We're talking about uh, House of X, Hickman's Avengers kickoff. Uh, I loved it. I really loved what he was doing in that. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I'm I'm not going to buy any more issues. I'll wait for the hardcover in December, but oh, I'm man. really excited. I don't know how you can wait after that. Like that first issue, it really hooks you from the go. Yeah. I uh, and it's full on Hickman with charts and graphs and everything. Yeah. So, totally. I'm I'm in for the long haul. I'm in for the long haul on this. We've got Powers of X next week, then another week of Powers of X, then another House of X. So he's got charts. He's got the whole thing mapped out and laid out. Um, Charles Xavier in it definitely seems like he has a God complex, and he's really like something ain't right. Yeah. A uh, highlighter. Any walking through the woods going on? Yes. We've got a great movie to review on Saturday. Jenny and I walking through the woods at midnight. We watched the black the black coat's daughter. Hmm. Oh, Lou, you would love this movie. What is this one? The black coat's daughter. It's on Netflix, okay. but you I don't think you do Netflix, but you can find it somewhere else. Okay. The black coat's daughter. I'll just give you a, a, some summation of it. Two girls at a private school. Their parents forget to pick them up. Uh, or something's happened to their parents and they're left there um, over uh, Christmas break. Mm -hmm. And there's an evil presence in the school uh, and things happen. And it hmm. has it has an ending that was so awesome. I cannot even believe it. <laughs> it was like the last five minutes I went, what? Are you kidding me? I can't even believe it. I would have been such a jerk in the movie theater. I would have stood it up and gone, are you kidding me? I didn't even see that. How did that happen? I didn't even see that coming. Do you, can you believe that? Do you believe that happened? Did you see that? It was amazing. I loved that. That's great, man. I'm I'm loving the podcast, dude. I really am. It's, it's I appreciate you know, it. I always make time for it every week. It's one of my favorites throughout the week. Um, you guys should definitely check out. I, I recommended it to you. Uh, what we do in the shadows. It's a horror comedy. Oh yeah, it, it's one of the funniest things that I've seen in years. I I laugh at it every single time. It's short. It's only an hour and twenty minutes. You should check that out. Uh, you should also check out the Mist. The uh, the two thousand. Was that 2007, 2008 version of The Mist, Geo? Did you see that? Yeah. That I, has I an ending. Oh, man. That an has ending. an ending. Yeah? <laughs> uh, it has an ending that I couldn't believe they actually got away with actually putting that on screen. Oh, really? Um, it's, uh, yeah, you should check that out, Jess. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That, that, that's a recommendation from me. It's, well, you've, have you ever read the Stephen King novel? No. Okay. Um, General premise, super quick. We're kind of flying by the seat of our pants right now, but this is after hours on Rose. rose. Um, <laughs> so the mist uh, centers around this guy who he gets trapped <clears throat> with his son inside of a grocery store and with his family inside of the grocery store. And basically there, this mist comes down from the mountain and they are trapped in this grocery store and trying to survive because the mist Oh, just takes over the entire city and there are monsters inside of the mist and it, it's great it's a uh, frank darabont mm -hmm. who directed it so you're gonna see a lot of walking dead people in it yeah the TV you will. Show. uh joe chip thank you for the compliment etl i'm looking forward to reviewing it with your wife and um thank you for the promotion uh, Lou, thanks. I appreciate yeah. that. So please, please do the mist one of these days. I'm telling uh, Christopher you. Christopher Band is saying, laughing his ass off, don't show Jess the mist. But read the comment below it. It's amazing, but ugh. Yeah, the ending. Well, I have Jenny to consider too here, you know. Yeah. That ending, though, I don't know how Geo felt, but it was one of those things where like the big reveal happened and I went, oh, come on. 
Yep. <laughs> it, I, I loved how crazy the ending was, but at the same time, I was really pissed off at how crazy the ending was. <laughs> it's totally different from the book. It deviated completely, but it, it's it's a it's a shocking ending that a lot of people, you know, they 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 uh, talked about it. That movie yeah. came out. Some people are mixed on it. Some people hate the ending. I'll put the name of it. Jess is gonna hate it, Christopher Madison. It's like, my I, it's my horror movie review show on <laughs> Omni Dog's Vault. It's called Walking in the Woods. Uh, I can I always I can't capitalize things right at this angle. Well, I can't spell right either. At midnight on Omni Dogs Vault. Vault. I um, I don't, uh, I don't so, do a lot of horror stuff though, but I do recommend The Mist. Justin Page. It is Walking in the Woods at Midnight, and it's a show on my channel, Omni Dogs Vault. We review horror movies every mm -hmm. Saturday. Uh, uh, ETL's wife, my friend Jenny, and I review uh and dice and we're gonna have a lot of dissection to do about this movie uh the black coat's daughter it was amazing the way it was done was just phenomenal so yeah you got homework watch the mist <laughs> it sounds, it sounds <laughs> icky yeah. i don't like a lot of icky it's i like not to be jump scared it has a lot of jump scares. But it has some really social commentary, some really interesting social yeah. commentary on like the social dynamic of, you know, a town and people and the yeah. the way everything runs and it, I I liked it. Plus I I the horror stuff that I like is more creature horror, aliens, monsters, werewolves, all that stuff. So I I really liked it. The uh, monsters look great in the movie. Okay, I'll see what she thinks. I'll run it by her. Sounds yeah. good. And yeah. next Thursday is Manga Bros. That's right. Is, is yeah. it next Thursday? August yeah. 1st. Mm -hmm. Riley will be back. And it's, it's going to be... I will not be on because it's about manga, which I know nothing about. So <laughs> the, the Otaku Bros are taking over. Yeah. Next Thursday. I'll post later on the community tab what the actual topic will be, so stay tuned. We don't know yet. It's a week right. away. Yeah, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> what is this, your Christmas list? I mean, it's a week away. Come on. <laughs> Got to decide it's that, uh, 6, 5, 7, <laughs> Right. Oh, man. 15 minutes before the show, we'll think of something. There you go. Is anybody catching a Once Upon a Time in Hollywood this weekend? Oh, is that open this mm. weekend? Yeah, it does. I think my movie buddy and I might go see that next week. Are you a Tarantino fan? I am. I, I'll tell you what I'm really excited about is Tar I just found out Tarantino's actually doing the next Star Trek. That's Kill the rumor. Me. That's the rumor. Kill me. I just read an article where he's talking about it. Yeah, and it's supposedly set in the Chris Pine timeline, the Kelvin yeah. timeline. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I can't even tell you how excited I am about that. Which, you know, I mean, they said that they're not going to revisit the Kelvin timeline, but if Quentin Tarantino says he's, he shows up at your door and he says, I'm doing a Star Trek movie, you open the holy gates for that man. And I'm pretty sure mm -hmm. everybody who said they won't come back will line up at the front door to come, come back to that. Oh, yeah, totally agree. Sure. So once yep. in a lifetime thing, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. Having Tarantino do a Star Trek movie? That what universe are we in? That's amazing. Well, we're in the Kelvin universe. So yeah. <laughs> that's amazing, man. I think he said it's gonna be rated R, right? Has to be. Has to be. I am personally looking forward to seeing the Klingon's head blow off his get blow blown up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Lou, where can they find you? Uh, Comics got 101 on Facebook and Twitter and all that other stuff. Geo, if they want to, where can they find you? Geo. 
Hello? Giovanni. You can find him at the governor's Sorry. mansion in Puerto Rico. Oh, there he is. Giovanni, I'm talking to you. Can you there he is. Sorry. What? Sorry, I lagged. I, my bad. What? I'm lagging. You lied about what? I'm lagging. Oh. I'm lagging. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm lagging. I couldn't hear you guys. Sorry. Uh, oh, you, okay. You can find me trying to fix my modem in a couple more minutes. <laughs> um, but you can subscribe to A Week in Geekdom, where I talk about anime, manga, comics, and everything else in between. That is A Week in Geekdom. And you can find me, Omnidog, on Omnidog's Vault. And on Instagram, where uh, I am at Omnidog underscore Vault. And this Saturday, I am going to be doing A Walk in the Woods at Midnight. Then I'm going to be on Omar's show talking about something, and then it's going to be Batter Days in the Bat Cave. We're going to be we're going to be talking about Frank Miller and Batman, an Ooh. uneven legacy. There you go. I wanted to call it Crazy Man Gone Bats, but we decided <laughs> not to. <laughs> Justin Page, thank you so much for the dollar ninety nine, man. Thank you, Justin. Peace and love, peace and love. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night.